Hello everyone, this is Kenny Bruni and welcome back. So this is going to be the chapter 5 of our lab tutorials for SNG 207 Programming for Engineers. And in this particular video, we are going to look at some characteristics of Python programming. So I made mention of some of these things in class and I need to re-echo or re-emphasize this because this is going to play a major role in we trying to write programs good so in this particular video i'm just going to show you some few things and we are good to go so there are some few things over here so we have dynamic versus static programming languages we have interpreted versus compiled languages then we have high level languages versus low level languages so let's start with what we have as high level versus low level languages and by now you should know that python is a high level language and it is a high level language because it has um, what we refer to as an abstraction layer that gives we the programmers some human readable vocabulary for which reason we are able to write something like print and stuff like that so these are high level language that human beings understand now what is going to happen is python is going to convert whatever thing we do over here and let me put this in the comments whatever thing we do over here whenever we type in for instance let's say print and i put in my name ken over here into some binary code and this can be something like i mean one zero 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 one zero whatever whatever okay and this is what the cpu is going to understand so python is a high level language because you can write this which is kind of human readable as compared to this now as and when we are writing this language it is either going to be interpreted or compiled so there are some languages that are compiled and others are interpreted so i think i made mention of this in the first class so let me just give a brief description of the two so python is an interpreted language but basically what happens is it is first compiled into byte code before it is interpreted into the machine code so there are two different things over here but then the most important thing is it is an interpreted language and examples of other interpreted languages are javascript java and the likes and you have these compiled languages as c plus plus c i mean objective c and rust now because of how they operate you normally read in books that compiled languages run quite faster than interpreted languages because compiled languages are very closer to the hardware than we have with interpreted languages because interpreted languages a lot of things needs to change before it gets into the zeros and ones we have over here for the hardware to understand and that's with the interpreted and python is a dynamic programming language and with a dynamic programming language i'm going to show you an example very soon so now let's look at something let's say we have a variable called i mean a variable first name and first name is equal to kwame so now look at what is happening over here when i do a print and i want to print out first name as i have over here when i save this and run this yes we see kwame over here now in between me declaring the variable and calling it to be printed out on line 9 i have inserted over here and over here i'm going to say first name is going to be equal to and in here i'm going to say ama and now when i save this and run this we now see ama over here now this is showing some element of dynamism and remember the name we have over here or the variable name we have over here is the same thing as we have over here and as we have over here as well and the reason why python is a dynamic programming language now unlike other languages before you even declare your variable the value you store in there will never change but in the case of python the data is going to be determined at runtime so clearly you could see that at this time or on line 7 the data was kwame when it came to line 8 the data became ama and that was the last time the data had ever changed so indeed 
Ama came to overwrite what we had inside of first name, which was initially Kwame. Good. Now, let's see. This is another name, and the other name is one, two, three. So, from the first time first name was initialized, you could see that it was Kwame. Then it became Ama. Then it became one, two, three before we are printing it out. So now when I run this, we get to see one, two, three being printed out over here. Now, in order to also satisfy our curiosity, let me just comment this one out and run this. We already know that by virtue of the fact that this being in quotation mark, these are variables that are of the data type strange. This we already know. We can as well check if you bring in a type method over here and now when i run this we do get a strange over here because you could see that there's a class str which is a strange which we covered extensively in our data type video in chapter three good now when i bring this up and now remember one two three has overwritten everything we have done over here and indeed when i run this the data type is an int so now this is giving credence to the fact that Python is dynamic and not only is it dynamic with the values we store in there, but also with the data type. This is very important. Other programming languages like C++, when you declare a variable like we have over here, you declare it with a data type. So for instance, you do something like int and let's say first name or I mean, there's a bad example anyway, but let's say int number and whichever number you assign let's say 20 you can never change the data type and value until it gets executed but in the case of python the data type and the data in there is determined at runtime so as at the time it was being run okay from line 10 that is where a lot of things have been determined and notably among them is the data type and the data in itself is a data type and the data itself so these are very important things you should know and this is going to help us moving forward because because of the fact that python is a dynamic language there are some things we can do in other languages we cannot do especially with the static programming languages now this are things you should be reading on your own so please i would want you to find out the pros and cons of dynamic and static programming languages please this is going to feature in our next quiz the advantages and disadvantages of dynamic versus static programming languages and you are going to give examples of each and every one of them so there's going to be a table and that's just by the way and the people who are going to watch this video are the ones who are going to have that hair start to actually know what lies ahead of them all right so this is going to be the end of this video and like i said a lot of these things are going to make sense when we move into the latter chapters in this particular series thank you very much and catch you in the next video Bye bye